everyone this is Heather thank you so much for joining me today I'm kind of celebrating the 45th anniversary of Hero Arts Rubber Stamp Company I've been stamping for over 25 years I actually owned a rubber stamp store for a few years and Hero Arts is one of the companies that from the very beginning when I first started stamping is a company that I've used they have always had great customer service great quality and I have hung on to a lot of my Hero art stamps over the years so I thought it would be really fun to get a couple of my older hero art stamps out and make a card with them so I wanted to do something that's a little bit more kind of trendy that we do you know that's stylish nowadays with some white heat embossing and adding some dots and a bold sentiment in the center so I'm sure that these stamps are probably no longer available, but the techniques can definitely be used, or maybe you're like me and you've hung on to some of these wonderful stamps over the years. So the first one that I'm going to be using is called Hibiscus Portrait. This is a very large overall floral pattern. I have used it a bunch. It's really beautiful, and it was printed in the year 2000. And then another stamp that I've had for a really long time, I can't tell you, how, as I'm sure you can tell, it's very well used. I've used it on so many different insides of birthday cards throughout the year. It's just a nice basic birth, happy birthday script. And this was made in 1996. So today for my card base, I'm using a really pretty pale pink. I've just taken an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, cut, scored and folded it in half. I have a piece of yellow cardstock that's four and three fourths by four. I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, and it's actually a little bit larger than what I need, but I'm going to be stamping this large rubber stamp on here, and I find with a large stamp like this, especially if it's a wood block, I like my paper to be bigger than what I need and then trim it off after I've done all my stamping and coloring. That way it's just a little bit easier for me to line it up rather than to stamp on a smaller piece of paper. And I'm using the Bristol Smooth cardstock because I think it embosses really beautifully. You could do this on watercolor paper, but you might wanna use a stamp positioning tool to stamp it out a couple of times, but this just really gives your embossing a nice smooth look. For my sentiment, I also have a small pink piece of paper that's two and a half by one and a half inches. And then for my sentiment, I have a piece of yellow and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna stamp it out and then I'm gonna trim it off to the size that I need. So I'm going to be using just a clear embossing pad. This is just a Versamark ink pad and I'm gonna ink up my stamp really, really well. And as you can tell, it's a very used, very well loved stamp. And now I'm gonna do my best to center this on my white piece of Bristol and use a lot of heavy, heavy pressure. I really wanna make sure that this image gets transferred well. So I usually kinda of like to stand up and put a lot of pressure on it. So I've carefully lifted off the stamp. I'm gonna grab my embossing tray and I have some ultra detail white embossing powder and I'm just gonna pour this all over my image. Just make sure it gets coated. I know this is gonna be probably pretty difficult to see with the white on white on camera. Hopefully you can see a little bit of that texture. I'm just gonna make sure I've got all the excess tapped off. And this is another reason that I wanted my paper to be a little bit larger. Now I kind of have an edge here to hold on to so that I'm not messing up my image when I'm embossing. So now I'm just gonna be taking my heat tool on high and melting my embossing powder. So I've completely embossed my image. Again, I'm sure it's very hard to see on camera, but hopefully you can see that little bit of shine on there. And I usually, when I'm embossing white on white, I just kind of hold it up to the light, tip it back and forth. If any of it kind of looks like it's a little grainy, then I'll hit it again with the heat tool. And now while I still have my embossing supplies out, I'm gonna take my happy birthday stamp and I'm gonna stamp it on my yellow cardstock. I've dumped the white out of my embossing tray and I'm now I'm just using black. And I tap off the excess. And again, I'm gonna heat this with my heat tool. 
Here's my finished embossed sentiment and I'm just going to set that aside for now. Next I'm going to add some watercoloring to my embossed flowers. I'm using some Karat Aquarel watercolor crayons from Stadler. And when I'm doing a white on white, I like to bring the stamp over. It just kind of helps me have a little bit of a better idea of where my images kind of end and begin. It just kind of helps keep track. So I'm using some very simple colors, just basic red, orange, yellow, and green. And I've got a little cup of water and a number eight paintbrush and a paper towel. So there's a few different ways that you can apply color with the watercolor crayons. Like with the yellow here, I'm just lightly scribbling directly on the paper. I'm going to take my damp paintbrush and just spread that color around. For the lighter colors, I think the direct to paper works really nicely. With some of these darker colors like the red, if you scribble on the paper, especially on this Bristol, you'll get kind of scratchy lines. So I like to actually pick the color up with my brush. So I'm just using my brush and picking up some of that color off that crayon and I'm going to take it on to my image and spread that color around. I'm going to pick up some of that yellow and just sort of blend those together. If I feel like I need a little bit more water, I can pick that up. So that helps you to get that nice blend of both of these colors without the scratchy lines. The more water you add, the lighter your color will be. You can also go in and pick up some heavier color and add like a little bit of shading and shadowing. And the amount of water and the yellow is why I've ended up with a much paler look than this really dark crayon shows. So I'm going to choose another flower. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to scribble a little bit of yellow in the center of one of those flowers. Pick up a little bit of water and spread that out. And this time I'm going to pick up the orange. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pick up some more of that color and spread that around. Now when you're using the Bristol Smooth cardstock for water coloring, you don't want to use too much water. You also don't want to overwork your images because this is not a watercolor paper. You can get some pilling and some lifting of the paper if you're not careful. Now if you're using watercolor paper, you can add a bit more water. So now I have that pretty yellow to go along with the pinky red. So it's a little hard to see, but every once in a while there are a few little green leaves. So I'm just gonna scribble a little bit of color in this green around where some of these leaves are. There's a lot of embossing in there, so I'm gonna clean off my brush and just kind of try and push that green color in between those embossed lines. If you have a lot of water kind of puddling up, you can take your paper towel and just kind of dab that away. So the green is very subtle on this, but I definitely wanted to add it. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish doing my watercolor. The same thing, just pick and choosing some of these to be a little more orange and some to be a little bit more pink. So here's my finished water coloring. I just kept it very loose and simple. I'm not the best at water coloring, um, so I just kind of go with the flow. So I want to trim down my panel. So I'm just bringing over my paper trimmer, kind of lining it up with the edge of the stamp, and I'm going to end up trimming this down to about three and three fourths by four and a half. So I've trimmed down my flower panel and I'm ready to do the same with my sentiment. I'm going to trim this down to about two and a fourth by one and a fourth. So now I've got my little sentiment trimmed down and now I'm ready to begin assembling my card. I'm going to apply some tape runner to the back of my sentiment, center that onto my pink. I'm going to do the same on my watercolor panel. And if yours is really warped, you might feel like you need to put, you know, quite a bit of adhesive just to kind of keep it smooth. I'm going to center that on my yellow piece and now I'm going to apply this to my card front. So I'm just going to center this on my card base. 
and I've applied some foam dots to the back of my sentiment and I'm just going to center that in on the front of my card. And now with some Nouveau Crystal Drops in the color Simply White, I'm going to add a few dots all around my panel, kind of where there's some white space in between the flowers. So I think these Nouveau Drops just add kind of a trendy, current look to them. I don't want to run my hands through, so I'm going to go back to my original card. And I'm really excited for Hero Arts having their 45th anniversary. I hope you enjoyed this card tutorial. It was fun kind of going through my stash and using some stamps that I've had for a while. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, check out my channel, and consider subscribing. And I hope you have a really wonderful day. This is Heather. Bye.